and welcome back to the fix section. Today we have Sheikh Ayub with us. Honored to have you, Sheikh. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, Sheikh. So lovely Thank to you. see you. Both Alhamdulillah. Join. It's nice to see you too. Thank you. Thank you. Sheikh, you have to um, uh, forgive me, but we got a really tax over taxing question. It's one of the hot topics, um, one of the topics that keep coming up, you know, continuously. So um, we have a question, uh, Sheikh. Um, it's regarding polygamy. And uh, the question reads, I had an arranged marriage in my 20s to conform to my traditional parents' wishes. However, I recently met someone whom I feel a real connection on a spiritual religious level with, and I wish to take her as my second wife. I am able to afford maintaining two marriages, and I do not wish to divorce my first wife. But my wife, my first wife, is threatening to divorce me and, to also, and also to prevent me from meeting our children. If I decide to marry for a second time, that is the threat. I have tried to be open and honest with my wife, but she is not budging. What should I do? And it's from an uh, anonymous individual from the UK. Hmm. Muslim brother in a tight situation, yeah. to say the least. Yeah, the, the, this is a, a difficult situation where the brother is in. So he is able to take care of uh, the both wives if he wants to marry. But the problem is from the other side where the wife doesn't want to be in this relationship. Um, it is a tough situation, but there are few things if we, we want to look at them from jurisprudential aspect. And number one is, was there any contract between the husband and wife when they, they were getting married? Where, for example, the wife said, I will not allow you to get married uh, in my marriage life with you if there was a contract where a wife and husband signed and uh, it said clearly that a husband will not be able to marry another wife then of course definitely he will not be able to marry because of the contract is that a permissible clause here it is according to our uh, jurists and these are maraji they have given that particular wow. uh, permission mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, yes mm -hmm. it, it can stay okay. if they agree right and uh, this is according to shurut sometimes when we attend the marriage uh, what you call ceremonies you can hear when they exchange vows that uh, the dowry will be a particular amount of money or anything according to their agreement with conditions so these conditions need to be looked at carefully because the Holy Quran talks about condition, awfu bil uqud, meaning stick to your whatever contracts you have agreed upon, uh, so long as it is not against the Holy Quran, not against the hadith of the Holy Prophet and Aima alayhi salam. And number two, uh, it uh, it's according to the hadith. Hadith says, al mu'minuna inda shurutuhim, that believers have to stick to their conditions. So on the basis of conditions, yes. But the husband needs to be very careful or very much aware of what uh, the consequences going to be yeah. as well as the wife. But S it, yeah. Sorry, Shay. Is the wife, um, let's assume that, that <coughs> this is for, or we can look at it from both ways. If the, that term wasn't in the contract, is the wife, is the sister going out on a limb because she's, does she have a right to divorce him in that kind of context? And also, will she have a right Islamically to say, well, because I'm angry, you just won't be able to see your children? No. The answer is definitely no. Angry doesn't make uh, anything in terms of law. Because the <laughs> sister is angry, then the law will be changed according to her angry. Right. It's not like that. Of course, she will be committing sin, especially if she says, for example, you are not going to see my children. The children, according to Islam, are of the father and the mother. And uh, it's, it's for the both parents to take care of the children. So she doesn't have a right to say, you will not be able to see my children. And, and this point is very important. It happens within our community sometimes because of anger. Sisters may say things. Brothers may, may say things. We need to remind them that your marriage became into, uh, came into existence 
because you decided to follow the Islamic laws. So Islamic laws need to be applied here. So they continue before the marriage, during the during marriage, the and after, if it so happens that the marriage ends. Indeed, okay. indeed. Okay. So we need to be careful about that. And, and actually one of the interesting verses which are recited during the marriage ceremony is in the first ayah in Surah An-Nisa. The first ayah in Surah number 4, where at the end it says clearly, Wattakullaha. Wattakullah and have taqwa, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have good consciousness within you because this taqwa is before the marriage, during the marriage, after the marriage, if the marriage is not going to work, we need to adhere to the taqwa principles. So number two uh, or number three regarding the marriage itself, uh, it cannot be dissolved because the sister is angry, another woman is about to come into existence and uh, the brother is going to marry. So uh, he's perfectly within his rights yeah. to say, because he can financially afford it, he's happy to maintain both of them. Sure. So he, she hasn't got a right to object to that sure. Islamically. These are not one of the things which will allow her to go out of marriage because the husband wants to get married to another wife. It is difficult for some sisters, or I can say many sisters, but actually, the permission for a brother to marry a second wife and if even the third and fourth has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we look at many aspects of why a brother can <coughs> marry more than a wife, it is, it is easy for us to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best. Allah knows the maslaha, the benefits of why has he has given permission Mm. for Muslim brothers to marry the second and the third and the fourth. However, there need to be conditions which needs to be looked at. And in this case here, we can see this brother says, I can afford to take care of a second wife. So that's a key issue. But to be able to take care of a second wife also psychologically, mm. socially, and emotionally, so on and so, on and so Emotionally, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there are many things which need to be looked at. So it's not only financially. So in this particular question, um, the, he's had an arranged marriage in his 20s, which you know, is still happening um, frequently in our communities. <coughs> um, his parents were happy in the 20s, but he's it doesn't seem like he's made a connection with his wife because the second wife, he's saying, woman, lady, is um, on a connection of a spiritual and religious level. Mm. So is he perfectly allowed in that situation to say, is that, a, a, um, you know, in, in terms of, in front of Allah that that's allowable to permissible to take on a second wife and for the wife then to sort of maybe they don't have that sort of connection religiously um, in a practical mm. level what do you mm. what would you say to that I think there are a few things to look at here number one it seems they were very young mm. when they got married and uh, one of the things which are, are advised to the parents and to the family members when someone is getting married we need to support that marriage, especially when they are young. Yes. We need to encourage them. We need to talk to them. We need to make sure that they understand the institution of marriage properly. Mm -hmm. That's number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And number two, these days, and I really ask for centers, maulanas, shuyukh, to talk to people before they get married, to explain the things which will happen. Like a pre-marriage counseling. Indeed, and some communities, they have started to do that. Yeah, yeah. These councils are very important because sometimes people think that to get married, especially some young brothers, is just to take this sister, live with her in your house, and that's it. But there are many things which need to be looked at. So when we say connection, spiritual connection or other connection, what do you mean by that? Mm. And, and another mm. thing is, uh, is uh, uh, the, the relationship grows day by day when two people live together. And one of the things which Muslims and Islam sometimes can be seen as if it is, it is kind of uh, not understanding the situation, not to allow the sister and brother to live together, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his rahmah and mercy makes two people who don't know one another properly. Two strangers. Two strangers. <laughs> they come into existence uh, in this institution of marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way he says, he has made out of this relationship mawadda and rahmah. So there is rahmah, mercy. 
However, we need to teach and nurture the institution of marriage between the two, young boy and girl or sister and brother, in order for them to understand, you know what? Yes, this is according to the sunnah of Rasulullah. This is a sunnah but of yeah, Imam Amir al and in Fatima to Zahra Absolutely, you're right. Yeah. Um, you know, but the, in a real life context, we have incompatibility. There may be someone who is so materialistic and mm. it's like, I don't really want to go to the mosque to pray on a Friday. And the man is looking for something that's more meaningful <coughs> in life. And we all progress at He's yearning steps. by the sounds yeah. of it for that spiritual con connection. Mm. So mm. It, it could be completely justified what he's saying. that, Or it could be, you know, and it works both ways as well. So in terms that we, we can say to two people, but they could be chalk and cheese and they can never, maybe never see eye to eye. Mm. So mm. in this context, if he, if the second wife, the first wife was absolutely adamant, she's putting these threats on him, he's under pressure. Is it better he does modda or should he do a temporary marriage as opposed to a permanent or what's his sort of what are his permissible boundaries in that context then yeah sure doing muta is permissible it is allowed especially if uh, the the brother sees that uh, the the time for me to go into permanent marriage is not ready yet he can go into that institution incompatibility when we talk about it there is within within if I can say uh, many marriages mm. and and some of the things will grow uh, gradually day by day year by year so the patience is what is needed here and understanding patience patience, patience. because some there's gonna be so many sisters watching who are gonna say if he doesn't have that ink um, if they're not that spiritually uh, compatible why doesn't he work on it why does he need to get mm -hmm. another wife mm -hmm. because you know that we're living mm -hmm. in the era and i've got to be frank of anti-polygamy and, and that's mm. just the muslims mm. you know mm. so again mm. yeah that was all right in the times of when the quran was revealed that's yeah. for war that's for in those societies mm -hmm. but now we have you know civil society law and order um, police mm. ambulances and social services why yeah. do you need to still have this ancient tradition yeah Indeed, and, and it's unfortunate to say that there are some people who are looking at Islamic, let me call them laws, that these are backwards laws. They can't uh, function at the modern time. But we need to remember that these laws came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Our creator knows us better. So when he says a man is allowed to marry more than a wife, there are reasons there. And these reasons will continue to be like that. I think in the future we are coming to a level where maybe there will be people who will, will uh, propagate for no marriages at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that the, the, the best life is for, her, for a man to live alone and for a woman to live alone. Islam says, no, we need to go to the real situation. Who is this man and who is this woman? They need to come together for many reasons in order for them to produce uh, children who will 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 go and and uh, the way we say fill the world inshallah I, I, for for the betterment of the they themselves so there are many issues which we need to look at however Shaykh, i believe we have a caller on um we have the, a caller on the line um uh, ahmed from london assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi would you like to pose your question to the sheikh yes please thank you very much sheikh no, mashallah great in-depth uh, talk you've been doing. I've been following the program. It's really, really interesting. It's something that we need in our community to discuss topics like this. Barakallah. Sheikh, Sheikh Na, the question I have is that I've heard that it's better to take a second wife who is widowed or who is divorced. Mm. Could you please sh uh, shed some light on that? That you know, certain women, unfortunately, in our community are neglecting each other, the widows and those women who are divorced. And surely they need to be married. They should have a priority to those who've never been married before. So could you shed a little bit of light on that and what we are to do with uh, widows and, and those females that are divorced? Thank you very much, Sheikh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very interesting. Thank you, Brother Ahmad. Interesting question. Indeed, Brother Ahmad has got a very strong point. For those brothers who want to marry, the second and, uh, and more than a wife, they need to look at these criteria, especially if we, we call ourselves people who follow the sunnah of the holy prophet sunnah of aima alayhi musalam then the holy prophet imams of ahlul bayt alayhi musalam noble people when they wanted to get married to a second wife they used to look at these criteria there's a widow here someone and especially in those uh, eras or times 
they want they there was no this what you call social system of helping people who are in need mm -hmm. so it was not only to take care of the sister and maybe there were orphans there and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam says clearly khairul buyuti inda allah baytun fihi yatimun mukram the best of the houses in the eyes of allah is the house where there is an orphan who is being taken care of so imagine if a brother marries a widow and there are children there who are orphans allah will bless that particular house definitely so yes we need to go for that and those sisters also who don't have means to support their lives even yeah, if yeah. they are not widows we need to to think for them also so what my understanding of what you're, you you've said today um and enlightened us with your knowledge is that when islam is talking about marriage it's it's about um building yourself into sort of more of a building an ummah isn't it it's about a spiritual and, and religious environment whereas when we're looking at culture today yeah. it's about ownership that you mm. married me <coughs> and you and you mustn't now look at anybody else mm. and, and that's mm. seen as betrayal and you know that's and so on and so forth so we have this conflict of of a very what individualistic um, yeah. outlook so ma what mm. so in just as a final point as we're coming towards the end what is marriage meant to mean to an islamic couple who maybe are looking to get married or are married what, what is marriage in islam marriage in islam consists of many things number one in order for a, a man and a woman to fulfill their natural needs if we can call them humanistic needs they need to marry in order for them to support one another according to the holy quran it says clearly hunna libasun lakum wa antum libasun lahunna women are your garments you men women are your garments and you women men are your garments so garments is there to clothe me to cover my shame to cover me from cold and so on and so forth so we are there to support one another number two, there are children there who are going to be born out of this man and woman we need to take care of them we talk about ummati muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam kuntum khaira umma you are the best of the nations and the umma why because you uh, do amru bil ma'ruf and nahi anil munkar umma can be formed through a sister and, a, and brother when there are children there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says about financially or economical issues that if brother is poor and sister is poor by getting married allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may, may make them rich so there are many other reasons benefits, uh, benefits many and benefits blessings. Yeah, and blessings yeah, yeah, yeah. and the last one is social uh, spiritual benefit which islam says la rahbaniyata fil islam there is no celibacy in islam in order for me to become a high kind of uh, spiritual person i don't need to marry islam says no mm. by marrying you will become a spiritual person wow because you yeah. can help the sister and the sister can help you and it is the sunnah of the awliya and sulaha noble people all of them we look at them they didn't live alone but they had a wife mm. to support them or a wife to be supported by a husband mashallah thank, so thank you so much Sheikh. that was uh, very interesting i open and i think <laughs> thank so you. we can say safely that this brother is it's permissible for him to marry and inshallah his they come to an understanding um probably get shot for that but <laughs> with <laughs> women um so we've got time you can go and viewers have a cup of tea have a break um we'll short, be, short we'll break, break and we'll be back with a new recipe for a weight loss smoothie apparently you're making it apparently so <laughs> so Turn we see see, see you soon inshallah